It's been said that the name Panama is derived from an indigenous word meaning land of abundant fish. With this country emerging into the 21st century as an increasingly important global economic nerve center, the idea of abundance seems all the more fitting. Abundance of commercial wealth, abundance of different ethnicities, abundance of natural beauty, and as my friend and local restaurateur, Julio Pascua, is about to show me, an abundance of, well, fish. More specifically, ceviche. Having the world's two major oceans on either side, Panama enjoys the full spectrum of seafood from both. Julio's got me on a multi-stop ceviche bounce around Panama City. First, close to the source, at the Mercado de Mariscos. It smells good. It you is. know, that smells like a good fish market. Well, this place was built with Japanese uh, influence. What do you mean by uh, Japanese influence? Japanese government donate to the city all the technology and everything they have to do with this market. Why did they do that? I mean, that's awful nice of them. You know, it's a favor you later have to, you know, cash in. <laughs> oh, right, the, the canal. Exactly. It doesn't suck having an indispensable choke point on global commerce in your backyard, okay. right? When you come through Panama or you don't come at all. Look at the shiny new fish market. Thank you, Japan. So what are the principal fish? The fish that people, most people eat around here is this one. It's a can of sea bass. We call it corvina. Concha negra, black clams. Yes. Langostinos? Langostinos, yeah, it will be prawns. Spiny lobster. Yeah, exactly. Plenty of good stuff, but the go-to everyday quick meal of choice, ceviche. Fish that's tossed quickly in citrus and seasonings. Around here, they marinate it until it's basically cooked. Yeah, which is your favorite place? Right yeah. here with a beautiful girl. Give us some amor, como estas? I'm hitting the rock lobster and shrimp ceviche first. Mm. Is there mayonnaise? Is there, no. It's a, mayonnaise ahí, ¿verdad? This is like a, a cocktail. Mmm. Spicy, fresh, delicious. Dale un poquito del de Corvina. Let's try a little bit of this one right here because it's the most classic. The one that we call Corvina. Okay. Gracias. That's the biggest seller by far. Then you've got your classic Corvina and lime juice ceviche, which is in one form or another everywhere in Panama. Looks pretty. Mmm, I feel so healthy. She's preparing something special for you. I asked him for a special leche tigre. And for those of us who may or may not have had too much to drink last night, there's the ubiquitous cure-all of Latin America, leche de tigre, basically the runoff from the ceviche. This one is the mix of the corvina one, the shrimp one, and the concha negra one. Ah, uh, salud. Yeah. And what about ceviche? What would you be drinking with this? Seco. Drink this made out of sugar cane. It pure looks like vodka. Wow. Later on, don't worry. It will be more ceviche and a little bit of second beer. Good thing I'm drinking this then. Not all ceviche is created equal. There's the everyday and the more creative. Berea, the kind of chic, open air restaurant lounge you can find almost everywhere there's money. Well, I'm guessing there are a fair number of apple teenies crossing the bar. I'm going for the Seco Sour, a more indigenous beverage. What, what would two gentlemen about town in uh, Panama City drink? Dos Seco Sour, por favor. Several parts Seco, a kind of sugar cane liquor like cachaça, some sour mix, a little simple syrup, dash of bitters, and there you have it. A beverage that, not unlike the ceviche style here, owes more than a little debt to Peru. Is there a Panamanian identity culinarily? We are, we are country, we are canal. Every time they will build the road or the train or whatever, it was different groups. But the people will stay here and they will bring the customs and we adapt it to our identity. The kind of crossroads of cultural influences you see all over Panama. Ah, here we go. Fusion goes down more elegantly when you're talking raw seafood. Tuna ceviche with ponzu sauce and black sesame, for instance. The most overdone dish in the world is tuna tartare. Raw chunks of tuna tossed or marinated in anything is like never, for me, an interesting. This, this is really good. Very sesame. Then you got the Mariscos Tropical. Mixed shrimp, octopus, calamari with sea salt, pineapple, passion fruit sauce, and a generous hit of madras curry. These are not tiny portions. Oh, that's nice. More a sweet sour thing. Sweet sour thing. Sweet, sour, and spicy. Why do you think ceviche is popular here? The weather, what you eat with it, which is beers. You don't have to really worry about anything here except it rain or doesn't rain. It's much more laid back here. Yes. It's very laid back. 
we probably have the highest percentage of people that come back to his country. And when they come back, they're happier than be Panamanians and they could be. It's been good for us. The opposite end of the spectrum from this morning ceviche, but surprisingly good. Where are we? Hong Kong? No. Singapore? Nope. We're the oldest Asian community in the Americas, Barrio Chino. I'm meeting up with Daniel Cheng, a first-generation Chinese Panamanian, to find out how Chinese is Panama. This is the old Chinatown, right? The original Chinatown. The original Chinatown. Maybe the oldest in America. Maybe the oldest in America. You're born here? I was born here. First generation born in Panama. First generation. Your parents both born in China? Exactly. So where are we going to eat today? So this is Guangzhou, which is mean Canton in Chinese. The old school Cantonese. Yeah, old school Cantonese. The term melting pot gets thrown around a lot when you're talking multi-ethnic communities, as does the term old school. I overuse it all the time, but if those terms hadn't already existed, you'd kind of have to invent them to describe this place. Roast duck, massive wontons, the fading red lacquer decor at imperial Chinese doorways. It's like New York, 1952. This is a place where Panamanians of every hue come together to eat what's now as truly Panamanian as anything else. Starchy portions of westernized favorites. One in five Panamanians have Chinese name or descendant. That's a lot, that's 20%. A lot. I mean, you can, you can just see it walking in the street. But first, back to that old school stuff. This one certainly fits the bill. Stir-fried tripe. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, here comes a duck, yeah. And what says old school quite like roast duck, wonton soup, and roast pork? Oh, yeah, there's the pork. Awesome. Hunks of pork. It's a cliche at this point on this show, but it's just so true. I, I just can't, can't resist. Chinese food tends to get shinier the further west it goes. <laughs> there are some places that still use MSG. I have no problem with MSG. I love this stuff. I'd sprinkle it on my breakfast cereal if I ate breakfast. Oh, yeah? Yeah. As a rule of thumb, everybody we've met so far has been just very up on the national pride bit. How Panamanian do you feel? I do feel Panamanian. I mean, a lot. The soccer team is playing. You know, I have to go to my country. I travel with Panamanian passport, but my heritage is Chinese. Daniel Chang's story is the same for so many Panamanians whose ancestors migrated here to work the canal. 